This is KGW News at Noon. Thank you for joining us this noon. I'm Mina Melhuff in today for Brendan. We start with a traffic alert. A section of North Lombard in Portland going to be closed all day following an early morning train derailment. Three empty grain cars came off the tracks as crews were moving them out of the port early this morning. One car hit part of the overpass, so Lombard is closed at North Terminal Road while bridge inspectors look at the damage. No one was hurt, but do expect delays in that area. All right, now to the latest on the coronavirus. Big news this afternoon. Washington Governor Jay Inslee says Clark County can now apply for phase two of the state's reopening plan. This next phase would allow more outdoor recreation like camping. Small group gatherings of five people or less would also be allowed. Barbershops, salons and restaurants would be limited to 50% capacity. Now, nine other counties can also apply for this. We don't know how long that process could take. Oregon's unemployment rate in April soared to a record 14%. That is a huge jump from March when unemployment was just 3.5%. It's the largest month to month increase since the state started keeping records in 1976. According to the Oregon Employment Department, one out of every eight jobs was either temporarily or permanently lost last month. We now know arguments will start Friday over whether Oregon's stay at home order is still constitutional after this long. It remains in place right now because the state Supreme Court stepped in last night. It put everything on hold after an Eastern Oregon judge ruled it unconstitutional. He agreed with a lawsuit from a group of churches that said the governor can't ban public gatherings for this extended period of time. That ruling could have reopened the entire state immediately. The Supreme Court will hear both sides starting on Friday. Well, there is growing hope for a potential vaccine for coronavirus. The first human trials in the country are showing early success. As NBC's Gabe Gutierrez reports, scientists say there's a long way to go, but this is an important step. The preliminary results are from the first coronavirus vaccine test conducted in humans. Oh, I was so excited. Jennifer Haller, a 44-year-old mother of two from Seattle, was the first person to get it in March. It's a bright light for everybody in, in this country and, and across the world uh, that, that, that we're seeing success here. Moderna, the Massachusetts biotech company behind it, says the experimental vaccine was safe for all 45 patients ages 18 to 55. Data for eight of those patients indicates they developed antibodies that neutralize the virus, potentially providing some level of immunity. 29-year-old Ian Hayden is another one of the first volunteers. It's encouraging to see news like this, but you know, you can't jump ahead and assume that we're at the finish line already. Moderna also says a study involving mice showed the vaccine stopped the virus from replicating in their lungs. Now plans to launch a larger human trial in July, putting it ahead of the dozens of other companies racing to develop their own vaccines. Um, if everything goes to plan, that we could have a vaccine by early next year or even by the end of this year. Thank you, Mr. President. Moderna's announcement comes days after one of the company's directors stepped down from the board to head up vaccine development for the White House. These data made me feel even more confident that we will be able to deliver a few hundred million doses of vaccine by the end of 2020. Stocks soared on today's news, but experts caution that while the announcement is positive, it's only a first step. It's the end of the beginning. <laughs> now we're going to have to open it up to much larger volunteer studies, and that always takes more time. Moderna says it's investing in manufacturing capacity to be able to produce millions of doses if the next phases of the clinical trial remain on track. Until then, here in New York, the new normal includes circles on the ground in this public park to ensure social distancing. That was Gabe Gutierrez reporting. All health care providers in Washington, including dentists, are now allowed to reopen so long as they meet certain criteria. This is going to be region by region, though, and it'll depend on COVID case numbers, hospital capacity, and the availability of PPE 
to determine when to take the next step. Each practice must screen patients and staff for symptoms and maintain social distancing for patients. Well, casinos across Oregon are starting to welcome visitors for the first time since March. The Mill Casino in North Bend was the first to open yesterday. It's operating at reduced capacity with social distancing in place. All guests have to have their temperature checked and have to wear a mask. The Chinook Winds Casino in Lincoln City plans to reopen Thursday with similar measures. Then next week, a a in Ridgefield resumes its normal hours staying open 24-7. It is primary election day in Oregon. You have until 8 o'clock tonight to get your ballot to a drop box. But a drop box, just one way to vote. The coronavirus has forced some changes for this election, like what about voting in an empty nightclub, for example? Very Portland, right? Maggie Vespa explains. Yeah, we'll start with the nightclub. Normally, Holocene looks like this. Strobe lights, DJs, even weddings. All of it's on their website. But this week, it's been transformed. No neon lights, no sweaty mosh pits. Now, it's voting booths set up six feet apart. We figured what better way to, to physically distance than just have people not needing to come into the office at all. Tim Scott so is the director for Multnomah County Park Elections. Park. And going into Tuesday's presidential primary, he's hoping, frankly, to keep people out of their Southeast Portland headquarters. It's the reason for taking over the club and for setting up this tent in a neighboring parking lot. This is where people who need a replacement ballot can pick it up normally they'd go inside. But that's not to say the elections offices are empty. The county sent us this video of more than 100 temporary employees counting ballots. That's less than half their normal crew, but the smaller staff is necessary to keep people apart. Workers are also wearing masks. And now that you've seen what's going on on their end, Scott has a message for Oregon voters. Well, have a plan for returning your ballot if you haven't done that yet. At this point, the ship has sailed on mailing ballots in. The deadline for that was last week. So let's review your options. Yes, voting in person at the normally bumpin' nightclub is one of them, but Scott hopes people use ballot drop boxes instead. They're the easiest way to vote while keeping your social distance. And they'll be open statewide until 8 p.m. election night. The Secretary of State's office has an interactive guide online to find the one closest to you. We have a link to it at KGW.com. Maggie Vespa, KGW News. And an update on the ballots. So far, just over 30% of Oregonian ballots are in so far. That's about 2% less than the day before Oregon's last presidential primary back in May of 2016. We spoke with Portland State political science professor Dr. Jack Miller about the impacts COVID is having on politics. But everybody that I talked to, even the ones who are using social media strategies and we're planning to use them even before the coronavirus came, uh, acknowledges that there is no substitute for face-to-face -face contact yeah. in local politics. So everybody's just wondering, okay, will this be a paradigm shift or is this just kind of a one-year uh, anomaly? Voters will choose some big things today. The Democratic nominee for Oregon Secretary of State, the races for mayor in both Portland and Beaverton, and several seats in the Oregon House and Senate. Multnomah, Clackamas, and Washington County will decide whether to pay for an extra homeless services tax. And be sure to join Dan Haggerty and Laurel Porter tonight for live coverage, analysis, and results. This is all online tonight. It's on KGW.com and our news app, and it starts at 745.